Lesson number eight of Ethics, Governance and Sustainability. So firstly, what is the scope of this particular lesson? So this lesson is on the corporate governance and other stakeholders. So unlike the previous lesson, we have in the previous lesson we have seen as to the role of shareholders. Now let us see what is the significance of stakeholders under corporate governance. So in, in this particular chapter, the scope includes the stakeholders theory, legal recognition of the concept of stakeholders, stakeholder engagement, stakeholder analysis, Cox Roundtable, and the Claxon principles of responsible sorry, Claxon principles of stakeholder management. Firstly, the stakeholder theory. So as per this theory of stakeholders, it basically says that for a successful business, you have to create value for your stakeholders. So that is what is the theory of stakeholder. So stakeholder theory is nothing but an idea as to how a business can really work. So a business can actually work only when it is satisfying the needs of all its stakeholders is what is the requirement under the stakeholders theory. And the stakeholders of any business include the management of the company itself, that is the employees of the company who have several expectations from the company, the customers who expect quality products and services from the company, the local community of society, employees, again, the suppliers or the vendors, owners, lenders, the government per se, the regulator themselves are also the stakeholders in a, in a, for a business, right? So this is the concept of stakeholders theory. So as per the Companies Act and also as per the LODR, there is a legal recognition which has been given for the concept of stakeholders. So it is not like stakeholders is a theoretical concept and there is no law which stipulates that they have to be protected or their rights have to be protected. So under the Companies Act and also under the LODR, there is a kind of protection which is given to the stakeholders. Let us look into it. So firstly, the section 135, the CSR, the corporate social responsibility is a complete section which deals only with the concept of stakeholders which says that the companies shall be responsible towards protecting the interests of the stakeholders towards the communities in which they operate so this one section totally is related to the stakeholders in terms of the community upliftment and also in terms of protection of human rights next under section 166 the duties of a director subsection 2 clearly states that it is the duty of the director to act in the best interest of all the stakeholders including the shareholders which means the duty of a director is now broader it has to take into its purview the role of the stakeholders as well that is what is the intention behind section 166 subsection 2 Next, Schedule 4, which is the code of conduct for independent directors clearly stipulate that the independent directors shall safeguard the interests of all the stakeholders and also they shall balance the conflicting interests of the stakeholders so this is the scope of the in independent director so they have to ensure that they are protecting or safeguarding the interests of all the stakeholders as well as they have to ensure that the balance they have to balance the conflicting interests among the stakeholders suppose a business decision has a conflict of interest among two sect of stakeholders let us say if the decision has been taken this sect of stakeholders will suffer and the others stakeholders are going to be benefited out of it right so there this is something a situation called as conflict of interest so how to balance such conflict of interest independent directors shall take their responsibility shall get their experiences in to ensure that there is no such kind of a mishandling of such a situation and finally sebi lodr regulations even though they don't come under the companies act per se but i just included in the same slide so that we are in we are having the understanding of it so under SEBI LODR regulations, it is clearly stipulated that listed entities shall respect the rights of the stakeholders. Number two, they shall provide re grievance redressal mechanism for all the stakeholders. And number three, access to information is something which they should be provided with. You know, that is in, that is ensured through disclosures in the stock exchanges and also in the websites. And finally, a whistleblower mechanism is something which shall be established, which ensures that the stakeholders in case of any grievances or in case of any finding of a fraud, they can report it to the management. So this is about the legal recognition of the concept of stakeholders in India. So now the concept of stakeholder engagement, which is a a really good concept which we need to understand as a student and also practically every business should take it into purview so by definition it is a process by which an organization is involving the people involving the stakeholders who may get affected because of the decisions taken by the organization and such people they are the people who can influence the implementation of the decisions taken by the management so as the name suggests engagement means like engaging themselves in any of the kind of activity the company is 
undertaking right so how do we do this part of stakeholder engagement so firstly we will identify the stakeholders then we will assess what kind of requirements they have and then we develop a stakeholder relationship plan with such identified stakeholders and then we start forming alliances with such stakeholders the final part alliances is nothing but engagement of a stakeholder so we will actually go develop a rapport develop a dialogue with the stakeholder try to understand what his requirements are and then get back to our business and then look into how we can actually help him out in reaching his expectations from our own business so the reasons for stakeholder engagement are firstly to improve responsibility of corporates across the globe and to avoid conflicts at a larger scale suppose you have taken a decision of say developing a or of establishing a factory uh, at a agricultural site say you have acquired hundreds of acres of farm few farms and all and then you are trying to build a factory and they assume there are nearby farms which are spread across 200 to 3 acres who are actually in the process of agriculture and when you are coming up with a factory the groundwater quality is something which is definitely going to be impacted for and you know the level of repulsion you'll get from the farmers who are undergoing agriculture nearby is definitely there that risk is definitely there so before even you can take that decision of acquiring 100 acres of agricultural land and setting up your own factory you should have had this prior stakeholder engagement with such stakeholders that is the nearby farmers and get to know what their needs are and then develop a stakeholder relationship plan saying that see your people your your children can start working in our factory your products can also be used we will ensure you'll get a proper market and then trying to forming ffi form alliances with them through your csr plans construct a school make sure their children are getting free education right so these are all these, these all you can plan only when you are having proper rapport alliance or engagement with such stakeholders so this is what is a stakeholder engagement about and this will ensure that there is no conflict of interest at a later stage of your project and then to have a developed shared vision so you, you know your stakeholders and yourself if both of you are having a proper vision let us say you want to develop a society develop a uh, smart city now which is nearby your factory and so the stakeholders that is the near the nearby villagers even they have that dream and even you have a dream so when you both come together you are actually sharing a you developing a shared vision right so that is some that is one other reason why you why companies will adopt for stakeholder engagement so now let us look into the benefits of it so benefits are many so i'm just identify two major benefits firstly your business practices are aligned with the social needs and expectations right and secondly whatever the decision you take it has long term sustainability and value so there is always a possibility of risk agreed however that risk is something not nearby it is it may be you know it can be spread across a large number of years and in the near future at least you will not have any kind of a repulsion from your stakeholders the other important concept is a stakeholder analysis which also has a relevance to a business of a corporate so this stakeholder analysis is firstly identification of the key stakeholders for a particular project of a company so if a company is going ahead with let us say for construction of a factory as i mean establishment of a factory as in our previous example then only for that particular project you will firstly identify who the key stakeholders are assess their interest and you see how their interest would affect the viability of your project if the interest of the stakeholders is so heavy that they they are not in a position to support your project then it is better you don't go ahead with the project so you will base you know we will firstly understand how their interests are going to affect the viability of my project right so what we do under stakeholder analysis is firstly we identify the stakeholders and then we start analyzing as to their expectations their needs and also how it would have an impact on my project so the object behind this is that whatever be the activity of an organization it should be based only on the interest of all the stakeholders and finally the information which are we obtained from the stakeholder analysis is used to analyze or to access how the interest of the stakeholders should be addressed in the proposed project so in the proposed project how can i address their interest is how is what i will be looking into in the stakeholder analysis so the difference between a stakeholder engagement and a stakeholder analysis is that under a stakeholder engagement we basically make sure even stakeholders are involved throughout the process of whatever we do so throughout a business relations we will make sure the stakeholders are also make playing a crucial role in it so we are engaging them we are trying to form alliances with them and have a shared vision or a goal 
over in a stakeholder analysis we do not actually get them into our business but we will do an analysis of their expectation interest and see how it has an impact on the proposed project of a company right or even if a project has been undertaken then how the impact is going on so monitoring the impact of the project on the stakeholders this is what is a stakeholder analysis and these two concepts are very important in this particular chapter now let us look into uh, cox round table so what is a cox round table so it is an international network of business leaders so basically round table itself means people sitting sitting and like discussing or like sharing things right so that is the reason why they have named it as a round table so cox round table is named after the person who has invented it or who has not invented sorry who had actually started it and in that round table there are people who are representing various businesses they meet periodically and they discuss as to how they can promote a sustainable way of doing business right so of that they have recommended two major things firstly the principles for responsible business and secondly stakeholder management guidelines we will look into these two aspects one by one so this is crt principles for responsible business so these principles are based on two major ideals number one the chaos a what is a chaos a it is working together for common good we have a detailed discussion on chaos a and then secondly human dignity so these are the two principles upon which they have built all the principles for responsible business so these are the two ideals so what are the principles you look into now those principles are basically based out of these two basic ideals that is chaos here that is working together for a common good or a common purpose and human dignity is something which shall be protected so let us look into what are those principles which have been identified by cox round table firstly respect your stakeholders beyond your shareholders right so do not just stop at the stage shareholders so even a shareholder is a stakeholder however do not just stop there uh, expand your wings try to respect even the stakeholders who are beyond your shareholders so that is the first principle second principle is as a responsible business you should start contributing to the economic social and environmental development of your region wherever you are operating your business third you should build trust in the eyes of the regulators and also in the eyes of the people by way of complying you know, or by way of going beyond the letter of law and like and actually understanding the spirit of law so you know letter of law is just a mandate if you are doing something which is beyond the letter of law it means you are actually absorbing it and you are actually adopting it into your business so that is something which is encouraged and respect rules and conventions or whatever be the rules or the conventions which your country is part of or where the rules or laws or legislations have been made make sure you are respecting the same and complying with it so complying just because you know you have to comply if not i'll get punished is a different thing however if you are respecting such rules and conventions that actually brings value to your business support responsible globalization so which means expand your wings try to make partners with various foreign parties and also you go establish yourself in various other countries but ensure that globalization is something which is responsible that is let us say in your country you are all safe you are all clean environmentally clean your process are good your manufacturing facilities are clean good and you they are having good manufacturing practices right who good manufacturing practices have been complied with however once you establish your manufacturing facility in some other country you are not complying with the same in the other country right so what is the reason why do you have to do it even if the other countries regulations are not stipulating it even then you should start adopting for responsible businesses even in that particular country so it is not just in the country in which you are operating in wherever the country you are operating you should ensure you are having the same level of responsibility towards the stakeholders so that is the concept of responsible globalization then respect the environment which is a common thing for any business so you should have a you should respect environment and finally avoid illicit activities like avoid child labor or avoid other illegal activities like bribing government officials etc so you now one tip for students is that whenever you look at the word responsible always remember it will take into its ambit concepts of environment society and economic development so esg governance is esg environment social and governance these aspects come into the concept whenever the word responsible is used right so that is just a tip for the tip for the students to remember but over this these are the principles and these principles are based on these two concepts the chaos and human dignity now let us look into the guidelines for stakeholder management 
So CRT stakeholder management guidelines take into picture various stakeholders, let us say customers. So as far as the customers are concerned, the CRT guidelines stipulate that you should provide high quality products and services to your customers and should ensure that the health and safety of customers is protected throughout the product's life cycle. Then the employees, so should compensate them adequately in order for improved life standards. Health, healthy and safe working conditions have to be provided for the employees. They shall be continuously trained through skill development programs and you have to avoid child labor or other forced labor. Shareholders, so adequate disclosures shall be provided to the shareholders or other investors in order to ensure that they make informed investment decisions. And then protection of shareholders wealth, you should ensure that the shareholders wealth is something which is being protected because you're acting on trust or you're acting in a fiduciary relationship with the shareholders. Then suppliers, ensure you have fair business terms with the suppliers. There shall be, there shall not be any clue or iota of coercion or threat to the supplier or from the supplier. And then you have to ensure there is long term stability with such supplier who are providing quality raw material to the company. So as far as competitors are concerned, you should ensure you are promoting fair competition, should avoid anti-competition agreements and should respect intellectual property rights. So if the competitors have various intellectual property rights. So suppose a company is having a patent over a particular product and you start utilizing that patent, using the patent without obtaining any license or any rights from that particular competitor, right? It is, it is nothing but infringement. So you should basically avoid such infringement of intellectual property rights and start respecting such intellectual property rights. Right, so this is something which is expected in a by through through a purse through a responsible business in terms of its competitors and finally communities. So the CSR is something which talks about the communities. You should start respecting the human rights to promote sustainable activities wherever possible and start respecting social diversity, which means you should also recognize and respect the local communities or the local cultures. Right? or even the minor or minority communities, you should not degrade them. You should start giving equal respect to the other communities as well. So these are the guidelines prescribed by CRT in terms of management of the stakeholders. And finally, let us look into the Clarkson principles of business. The Clarkson principles of stakeholder management takes into purview various principles. Let us look into one by one. Firstly, stakeholder analysis. So it basically says you have to identify the stakeholders and then to look into what kind of expectations and expectations they have and then analyze how it can impact the viability of your project or how it can actually impact your project's outcome and stakeholder engagement so the second principle says you have to engage the stakeholders you have to make them a part of your business decision making mechanism then you have the business has to be sensitive towards the capabilities of the stakeholders so by by sensitive we, we do not mean the business should should not take any risk by sensitive we mean they have to ensure that even a minor you know concern of the stakeholder is not impacted because of your business decision so that that sensitive is how a business should be and then you have the in so you have to recognize the principle that the business is interdependent of the efforts and rewards among the stakeholders the kind of efforts the stakeholders put forward even the business should ensure that they are giving them the same level of importance and then so we, whenever any stakeholders interest is impacted where even a business your business is not the response it is not responsible however you want to protect their interest then you should tie hand in hand with such stakeholders join them through collective actions right and then come forward try to protect their interest next avoid activities which would jeopardize human rights so do try to promote human rights rather than that you know, rather than saying this i can say you should try to promote human rights do not try to involve yours involve the business in such a activity which would impact the business's reputation because it is jeopardizing the human rights of its customers and finally handling of conflicts of interest so wherever there are any conflict of interest either among two groups of stakeholders or among the business and the stakeholder ensure that you're doing it in such a manner it is through an unbiased way and it is totally rationalized and it is after taking inputs from the experts in that particular field right so these are the principles of stakeholder management identified by the Clarkson so the Clarkson principles are the final 
uh, this is the final slide which we see in this particular topic so you know in order to summarize this entire discussion of this chapter so this chapter is basically focusing on how a business should respond towards its stakeholders and for that the Cox roundtable conference and also the Clarkson principles are helping out in structurizing how a business should respond towards its stakeholders and the interests of its stakeholders right thank you